Monday, March 18th, and welcome to Wake Up with Damon and Larry. Great to have you here again. A little one-stop shopping for you now three days a week on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Join Larry and I for all your latest Niners headlines and then a look at what else is going on out there in sports. Larry, how are you? Uh, hopefully you had a nice little selection Sunday uh, that that show is so much better when my Hoosiers are involved there. They broke my heart this year, but I'm excited. We got brackets, baby. I'm going Connecticut, uh, Houston, Creighton and Bama two ones, a three and a four with, um, Connecticut cutting it down. Cutting By the way, I, in Phoenix. I, so I like UConn an awful lot in this tournament. I like your Creighton pick an awful lot in this tournament. I also like that your final four doesn't have Purdue in it. Neither does mine. And we'll have plenty of time, I think, on Wednesday to talk to people about their brackets. But look, we are here to give you the very latest on everything that happens with the 49ers. And it wasn't a big, splashy weekend with the Niners. A few additions, nothing just you know cataclysmic happened over the weekend larry um let's just talk about the new faces that are in the room and we'll start there we got our first three segments today are called new faces new faces same places (laughs) easy for me to say right new New faces faces. yep new faces same places and goodbyes so here are the new faces in the room obviously there are two edge rushers who they did not have before, and these were the first two names right up the bat in free agency, Leonard Floyd and Yatir Gross Matos. Malik Collins shows up via a trade with the Houston Texans, who we talked on Friday about a uh, Texans insider, John McClain, telling me to be very, very excited about the value the 49ers got there, a song for Malik Collins trading just a seventh rounder. Defensive tackle Jordan Elliott from Cleveland. Um, Isaac Yadam. Uh, The Saints has been signed over the weekend. Cornerback, defensive back Chase Lucas happened on, I believe, Friday, Larry. And Devondre Campbell, linebacker for the Green Bay Packers, has also been added this weekend. And he comes in with an Instagram story saying, you know, I really felt misused in Green Bay. I've been a little bit of a journeyman. They didn't get me right. And he's looking forward to uh, proving everyone wrong in a 49ers uniform. So new flight, new, new faces and, uh, and, and some motivation here for at least the De, uh, Devondre Campbell coming in from green Bay. what do you think of the weekend's moves? Well, I mean, just overall the, you know, the moves from the start of free agency, I love Leonard Floyd. I mean, I thought Leonard Floyd was quite a bit better than chase young, quite a bit better than, than Randy Gregory. I think he's better than the D Ford that the Niners had that when they went to the Super Bowl 54 a few years back, um, I think Floyd is better than those guys. I think he's, he's, he's got greater explosiveness. He's a six, six guy. He's under, he, he's a better player than when he came out of Georgia for the bears. I mean, he's a technique, it's a technique rich position and the guys always had freaky get off. And now it's, he's got technique, he's got counters, so I love Leonard Floyd, and I think that gives them true bookends that they haven't had. Um, Malik Collins and Jordan Elliott, it's more hope, right? I mean, you got rid of Eric Armstead, who's like an established guy. Collins had an enormous power profile coming out of Nebraska. I mean, <clears throat> he showed such crazy power on tape, but he had no instincts and no no uh, technique. And now here he is, you know, a few years later, he's not old. Uh, he's become much better of a pass rusher, and he still has that crazy strength. And as far as Jordan Elliott, I think that's the best pick they've made. Uh, Elliott is on the come. I mean, he was five or six, the best defensive tackle in the game last year against the run. Um, so, you know, he, he hasn't played a lot of football. There's low mileage. He's pretty athletic. He can give you a little pass rush. He's healthy. He's young. So I love that one. You tear gross Matos. I mean, I think teams have been taking shots on on gross Matos for years now on, uh, you know, Penn state Carolina on just the physical profile. I mean, six, 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 seven with just long arms and unbelievable, uh, body for the position, but we'll see what he does. He's coming off of his best year. I love those four. Um, and I really liked Isaac Yadam, um, who I saw at Boston college and, you know, big long corner, who um, has <clears throat> way better technique than when he came into the league. Yeah, he, he was a little bit of a project. He was a physical specimen project and right. then kind of came into focus due to an injury in the Saints secondary. So he got more starts 
I think last year than in any other year of his career. And he played pretty darn well in that, in, in those spot starts. Yeah. And he, and he's got long arms and he's tenacious and he's really athletic. So th- there's a little question as far as the deep speed. Um, we'll see if he can hang with deep speed or if he's just kind of a replacement level player. By the way, Larry, remember the scene in Moneyball where the old school, old school scouts were talking about how they liked guys with good jaw lines and they liked guys with pretty girlfriends because pretty girlfriends was like a signal of confidence and machismo. Um, Isaac Yadam. And I just, I, I did not look for this. This found me more than I found it Uh-oh, is, is dating a woman named Savannah Montano. Don't look up Savannah Montano while your wife is around. She will not like you looking at that on the internet. She, this, if, if a cornerback can be evaluated on his girlfriend's hotness, we're talking about the modern Deion Sanders coming to the 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got some game. There's no question about it. He's super confident player, and he's got size. He's got long arms. Uh, I like Yadam, and, and to me, they're getting him at exactly the right time and at exactly the right price. The two the two picks I didn't love. I didn't I mean I didn't love going after um, Hendrick or Kendricks because of his age. And then he bolted to Dallas. And then I didn't like the signing of Devondre Campbell. I mean, I just think that this draft is loaded with some really fast linebackers. And Campbell, to me, is, you know, was fast coming out as far as his 40 time at the Combine. But I don't think he plays to that speed. Um, I don't know. I I like, excuse me, I like the fact that he's um, got, a you know, an axe to grind with Green Bay. That's good. Because Green Bay is going to be, you know, standing between the Niners and and uh, the Super Bowl again. You would, you'd got to think. So I like I that aspect. Out, uh, like I reached out to a couple of buddies of mine, haven't heard back from them yet, who cover the Packers, and I just I wanted to know more about him. Just you know, what do you think of him as a player? And he says he was misused. W- what does that mean from from your end? You know, I mean, w- w- what does a misuse mean? Misplaced, out of position. Right. Uh, that can mean a lot of different things for a player. I wonder what it means for Devondre Campbell. Well, I mean, you know what? If he feels he was badly misused and he's got an ax to grind and something to prove, that's always a good thing. So um, I like that. And I like the fact that he's got good size and speed. But um, I just thought that that was a need that could have been filled in the draft. Every mock draft that I've done, when I get to the fifth, sixth round, there's some crazy great players out there that are linebackers. They may be a little undersized. They may be a little this, a little that, but they're really productive. So I think that's a deep spot in the draft. So I, I wouldn't have gone with Campbell, but whatever. Uh, Chase Lucas, special teamer. Um, Ezekiel Turner, special teamer. You know, that that's fine. I mean, I, I, I don't have a strong opinion either way on special teamers. Um, and then, you know, I, I kind of, I, I, I feel like I accurately predicted which free agents they would re-sign. Um, I thought Givens would be gone, but so but Larry, I, I went did bring that. back some guys that I thought they would bring back. I, I, I Feliciano and um, Conley. So uh, overall, I liked the hall. It's not. It feels like there's a big move coming, and and the reason I say that, Damon, is they filled like several of their actual holes, and they have ten draft choices. So like, if you told me that the Niners were gonna going to take two or three of those draft choices this year and one or two of those draft choices next year and throw them all to Denver for Sertan. Six weeks ago, I would have said, no, no, they won't do that. But now, based on how they attacked free agency, I think there's a there's a there's definitely a chance they do that kind of a deal. I think it could happen. There's a lot of talk that Zach Wilson of the New York Jets could be coming to the 49ers. We'll get to that. No one would call that or classify that as a big move. But we'll see if that could be 
something that they, you know, dive into this week as we are officially now this Monday through or we'll, we're beginning our, our second week of free agency here with the draft coming up on April 25th. Welcome to Wake Up with Damon and Larry. If you're just getting here, good morning. Uh, we are coming to you live Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.30 a.m. West Coast time here on YouTube. Thank you for being here. Please hit like and subscribe. This is simulcast on both our channels. Make sure you're watching both our channels. Uh, and you're right, Larry. We put out that, uh, that you know, tough roster decisions short. And there's like... 93% level accuracy on the calls that we made is who might be going, who might be returning. And let's talk about some of these faces that are going to be in the same place. Chris Connolly is back on a one-year deal. Everyone kind of expected that to happen. Brandon Allen has been re-signed. Colton McKivitz gets re-upped for a, another year for 2025. George Odom gets two years. So, there is some safety depth and a special teamer of value. John Feliciano continues to maintain an offensive line that, if not star-studded, but for Trent Williams, is installing the basement of returning what they had last year, which as bad as it was, was still good enough to get to a Super Bowl. And they're going to have more depth, and they're certainly going to be addressing the offensive line again in the upcoming draft. Uh, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles is back on a one-year deal. Kevin Givens is back on a one-year deal. And then the two guys that are still in the room that we thought might be gone are Juwan Jennings is still with the 49ers, and nothing dramatic has happened yet with Brandon Ayuk in terms of him returning or leaving. So he is still very much in the mix. And there's a lot of, here, here's the thing. There isn't a player that they retained, Larry. There isn't an ad that they've made so far in free agency where I can't wrap my mind around it is making sense. Like it makes sense. It fits together. It might not be blowing you away with marquee value, but it all makes sense for the 49ers going forward. And like you said, if this is setting up a big move that comes ahead of the draft on draft day, a lot more will come into focus at that time. Well, you know, the um, let's talk about IUK for a second, because I think the way the IUK thing has been positioned um, is that, you know, they're going to wait until after the free agent period, and then they're going to make their ask. And then the Niners are going to react to that ask by either giving it to him, negotiating with him, telling him we're going to take care of you next year, which would be very unpopular with his camp, or trading him. And um, trading him is absolutely an option when you look at they've met, you know, the Niners have met with some offensive linemen that are going in the top 15. They've met with some some players that are going in the top 15. So, um you know, there there probably is some pivot trade if they don't like the IUK number. Um, I still think that I take them at their face value when they say that they want to retain Brandon and they want him to be a Niner long term. I mean, why wouldn't they? I don't man, I don't think that that's lip service. I mean, it's obviously lip service. All about the number point. Right. But this guy does everything that they've asked him to do. He's developed. He's gotten better every single year. He is bought into blocking in the running game as much as he's bought into making big catches on third down. Like he is, he is exactly the wide receiver that Kyle's wanted all along. So you don't want to walk away from that if you can't. Well, it's once again, it's business. So you know, if if he wants twenty two million, you pay him. If he wants twenty four million, you pay him. If he wants twenty six million, you grimace, you pay him. If he wants twenty eight million. Um, you know, it's a tough call. If he wants 30 million, if he wants 32 million, if Justin Jefferson takes this, you know, money to a crazy level, we've already seen Calvin Ridley take guaranteed money to a crazy level. If he wants the guaranteed money of Calvin Ridley and he wants something in the mid thirties, he's probably traded. It's probably going to be traded now. Then there's probably a team out there where they give them a first and a third round pick because he is a veteran receiver coming off a great year. He's not old. Um, he was a he was you know a all pro receiver this year. So I mean, there's he's really much at the top of the scale. But it's just going to come down to that. If they can get him in their range, they'll do it. But my guess is if they if his range exceeds their range, he'll they'll trade him. 
So um, it's a good receiver draft. Um, there's all kinds of really talented guys. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what they come up with. But, yeah, I, I that's a big one. The Zach Wilson one is not a big move per se as far as the team is concerned, but it is probably the move outside of Ayuk that will draw the biggest numbers on videos that we do, live streams where we talk about it. There's just a lot of people that are really, you know, that's a very polarizing name. I mean, the NFL fan thinks they know all, um, and they really think they know all when it comes to the quarterbacks and the head coaches. So right now there's a belief around football that Zach Wilson sucks and that anybody who acquires him is an idiot. And there will be lots and lots and lots of people that if the 49ers do consummate a trade for Zach Wilson will be jumping up and down proclaiming it the worst move in the history of the franchise. I think it would be a great move. I think it would be a great move. I think Zach Wilson is definitely better than Sam Darnold. I think Zach Wilson in the Niners scheme could really emerge. Um, I, I liked Zach Wilson in the draft. I still like Zach Wilson. I, I, I think Zach Wilson eventually, you know, I, I saw him at BYU. He operated in, um, you know, in a pretty wide open pocket where there weren't a lot of bodies. Now in the NFL, he's made two bad mistakes. He made a mistake at the podium, and he's been paying for that by throwing his team under the bus and not taking responsibility and just getting roasted by every fan, every media member, every player, every everything. That was a huge mistake. And the other mistake is just he's just not been comfortable in a muddy pocket. And, um, um, you know, so, I mean, Brock Purdy, what he, why is Brock Purdy Brock Purdy? Because the muddy pocket doesn't bother Brock Purdy. Why is Zach Wilson Zach Wilson? Because thus far, the muddy pocket really bothers Zach Wilson. Can he make the adjustment? If he can, he's going to have a good career. If he can't, it's going to be short-lived. So, so you're, um, we'll I mean, I think, I think, I think he does. I think he can make the adjustment. He can. I mean, you don't want to declare anyone who is 24 years old or however old Zach Wilson is a complete project. I mean, he's still very young in his career. He's been in a bad situation. And I like, I, I, I sympathize with how tough it must be to be a New York jet and the polarizing nature of Zach Wilson and just the New York media machine eats guys alive, but there are major red flags on him, Larry. There are major red flags, and there's no reason to pretend they're not. Um, there is a level of distrust amongst his own teammates that was palpable. There was a level of rooting for the guy behind him that was palpable, and that wasn't just because he had a bad podium day. Um, I also think I've watched enough Jets football to know that he at times appears to be non-functional as a starting NFL quarterback. I mean, totally incapable of completing easy throws from clean pockets at times. He looks wildly rewired. Now, if Kyle Shanahan is, you know, a, a quarterback whisperer and fixes broken toys, maybe there is a high ceiling, low floor type of quarterback for the 49ers to develop, to cash in on another day, if not to come in and save the day, should something happen to Brock Purdy. So when it comes to the reclamation project of the value that you could unearth with him, sure. But let's not pretend that Zach Wilson is about to do anything special. There has been nothing to this point in his career to suggest a full-time starting NFL quarterback out of Zach Wilson. I'm sorry. There just, there hasn't been, he's been, he's been for reasons that are explainable bad. And he's been unexplainably awful in other cases. Yeah. He, he hasn't done it yet. And he's made some mistakes along the way. And, um, but you know what? <clears throat> the hall of fame is littered with quarterbacks that didn't do anything until they were 27, 28, 29, 30. So it could happen. It could Did we happen. Just go double synchronized sip there, Larry. <laughs> I'm laughing at uh, I'm laughing at all the people in the chat who are just so anti Zach Wilson. Broken metronome. The worst move possible would be Zach Wilson. I mean, 
How could you figure that? Me that's I mean, more why? With Brandon Allen being the guy now that he's in year two with this team than Zach Wilson picking it up in year one. But again, underestimating guys early in their careers is something you should do at their own peril. I think that every player who shows up in a bad team and doesn't play well should at least get a chance to look better in another situation. I'm not declaring Zach Wilson permanently damaged goods, but boy, there's an awful lot that this team, I mean, not that the team has to sell the fans on anything, but fans are going to need to be sold on Zach Wilson. I don't know how many people want to do any selling on behalf of Zach Wilson. You apparently seem to be first in line to yeah, want to sing the praises I, I think, of this guy. You love Zach Wilson. That is a yeah. big, bold, seem, like it feels performative and unnecessary. <laughs> no one loves Zach Wilson but his mom, and Zach rewarded his mom by, I think, banging one of her friends. Yeah, well, he's got big arm talent, and he's got ability to move, and he's I think he's got big time playmaking ability, and he's just it just it hasn't you know it hasn't started well, right? I mean, it hasn't started well. He's in New York, playing for a bad team. He steps to the podium and says, you know, instead of saying, "Hey, man, it's on me, it's on me," and that's what he should have said. He's like didn't take responsibility for the offense being bad because he thought he was going to like hold off the media. If he just didn't admit it, he'd be fine. Wrong calculation. You know, I mean, you got players walking around wearing uh, the backups t-shirt. It just was a mistake. Um, and then this, this year, uh, how about this this? Year he had, he had, he had uh, obviously Aaron Rodgers there. And then Rodgers goes down, he gets thrown into the mix behind a, you know, he's on behind a bad offensive line, some young receivers. He just not, he just hasn't been ready to go. I don't think he's been properly supported, but guess what? Kurt Warner, T Terry Bradshaw, Roger Staubach, Steve Young, um, others. I mean, Vinny Testaverde, Alex Smith. At no Alex time, Smith though, wasn't good at, until at his no, eighth year. He was pretty at, good by his eighth year, but he wasn't very good early on. If every name that you just said at no point in time was anyone questioning, like, is this even a good guy? Like, that's part of the story of Zach Wilson. Like, can he be trusted? Is he shifty? Is he just people don't like Zach Wilson? And it's not people that root for him or on Instagram. We're talking about his own teammates. His own teammates came up and cheered for Mike White behind him at the end of a Thursday night football game in a way that was absolutely meant to demonstrate Zach Wilson, go fuck yourself. We don't like you, dude. Like th the Jets voted publicly and privately on not liking this guy. The The locker room did. Not yeah. media members, not fans. The locker room said on Zach Wilson. So that does give me an awful lot of caution. But I'll tell you this. For pick number, what are we talking? It would be pick number 251. Is it rem the remaining seventh rounder? Okay, but that's it. If they pay, if they give a sixth for Zach Wilson, they will have overspent. Seventh round draft pick, and that's it. That's all I would offer. If Justin Fields goes for a sixth, Zach Wilson can't go for anything other than a seventh. You know, but Justin Fields, I think, has some bigger problems than Zach Wilson. Z Justin Fields holds the ball, doesn't see it. Um, you know, how does Zach Wilson get rid of the ball and seize it all? I mean, what are you, what are you talking about? One guy starts as an NFL starter. The other guy is unplayable before Aaron Rodgers showed up. You know, I, I just think that when you look at a guy who's got four, four speed, but then led the nation and being sacked, there's something wrong there. You know I mean? You have four four speed and yet you get sacked a lot. So what does that tell you? It, well, it, didn't hold up all, it, it also shows it that me the, holds the football way way too well, long. And the Chicago Bears didn't protect him right, and they didn't have. I'm talking about Ohio State, State in the pattern. I mean, oh, okay, but I'm Larry, talking about back, back at Ohio State, he held the ball a ton. I think that's really why Shanahan never never gravitated towards him. I mean, I like him, uh, but I'm you know I'll just say this. Okay, look, look, every year we go through this exercise. I mean, look at the 2021 draft. They were all going to be great. Zach Wilson was going to be great. Trey was going to be great. Everybody was going to be great. Now, fast forward, and, and now look back. They're all bad. <laughs> you know, they were all traded um, for low picks, and, and Zach Wilson's going to be the next one probably in the next day or two, and maybe to the Niners. 
Now look at this year's draft. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix. Those six guys, all of them could wind up going in the first round. If you mention those names to people around the around the country today, you're going to get glowing uh, report cards on those guys. But history tells us that at least half those guys are probably going to fall on their face. Sure. Then, then you get this other list of quarterbacks, and they're the list of quarterbacks that are in the league that have had either some moments, good or bad, but they're out there and you can get them for hardly anything. Zach Wilson, 24. Mac Jones, 25, went to Jacksonville. Sam Darnold, 26, went to Minnesota. Kenny Pickett, 25. Uh, who's Kenny Pickett? He's an Eagle now. Justin Fields, 24, now a Steeler. Kyler Murray's 26. Uh, he's had some highlights and lowlights. Daniel Jones is 26. Same thing. Davis Mills. Sam Howell was traded from the Commanders to the Seahawks less this weekend. Trey Lance may wind up getting traded, but even if he's not traded, he's 23. Uh, Jake Browning, Drew Locke got moved to the New York Giants. Bryce Young, Malik Willis, Desmond Ritter got traded. Aiden O'Connell. Some combination of one or two of those guys that were failures before are going to find themselves going forward. And we just don't know who it's going to be. Right. So then it's a matter of, but let's not, let's not say that right now today, Justin, Justin Fields and Zach Wilson are at the same starting point. But let's just, uh, my, my, Michael my, Vick my, compared to Zach Wilson. Okay. I mean, like my, uh, at least Justin Fields gives you an element of danger at the quarterback position. At no point in time is Zach Wilson a- executed enough first downs for you to be worried about him as, as a passer or a runner or anything. I mean, that's Fields today. To this point, that's yeah, today. I know, but Justin that's Fields today. to this point to today has the second most rushing yards this point in his career for any quarterback other than Lamar. I mean, so yeah. there is a a guy who actually makes plays on a football field in Justin Fields in some capacity. I mean, you're making an argument for a guy who was traded for a six-round draft choice over the weekend to the Steelers. So, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, is he going to be good? Is he not going to be good? All I'm saying is if you look at the Hall of Fame list, Dan Fouts, Roger Staubach, Steve Young, Troy Aikman, uh, Sidney uh, or um, um, uh, Kurt Warner, Lenny Dawson, Sonny Jurgensen, these guys were all bad at this point, and they all became Hall of Famers. So um, all I'm saying is it could happen, and we don't know which guys it can happen with. And just, just you know, I think we just have all have to acknowledge that um, – Today, Justin Fields isn't very good. Today, Zach Wilson isn't very good. But it doesn't mean that they right. won't but be very good We also acknowledge tomorrow. that today, Justin Fields is a functioning, actual, you can play him in an NFL game quarterback who has done 10 times the career already to this point in his career than Zach Wilson. I mean, Zach Wilson is in Justin times? Fields' neighborhood. No, not d- 10. Th- one is unplayable, Larry. The other guy was starting l- right until last year. I mean, not t- to, to very degrees of success, but Justin Fields, like, by himself, won games for the Chicago Bears. There is n- n- Zach Wilson can't even win over his locker room, much less win an actual football game. So, look, we're we're spending too probably too long well, talking you know, about. Well, well, if we're, we're going to talk about it, let's look at the numbers and see what the numbers say. I I, I my guess is your numbers are going to say you're wrong. Let me let me take a look. Here is Justin Fields' numbers. Justin Fields' numbers. Uh, he's completed sixty one point four percent of his pass sixty point three percent of his passes in his career. Zach Wilson, 57%. Okay. So, I mean, so, so yeah, just it's pretty, better pretty passer. 23 touched. I mean, but I mean, very close. Both, both 60%. 60% is not good. Right. No, but your argument was that the I number. Mean, Zach Wilson this better. last year, this last year, Zach Wilson completed 60% of his passes. This last year, um, Fields completed 61%. Okay. So career wise. Fields has 40 touchdown passes and 30 interceptions. 
Career-wise, Zach Wilson has 23 touchdowns and 25 interceptions. So, I mean, they're both have not been good, but I'm just saying right. it's not. They're right. both but young now, now quarterbacks. Let's bring the other, let's bring the other element now. One What's guy that? rips off a thousand yards rushing, and the other guy can't move. <laughs> so there's that too. One is already very early in his career, suggesting that he could be the single greatest running quarterback in the history of football. The other guy isn't liked by his own mom. The, well, the, maybe the, she the, likes him, but the friend definitely like. Either way. Look, there's, there's, I mean, it's. He, I'm not saying that Zach Wilson's been good. I'm saying that. No, you just tried you know, to say that Zach Wilson is better than Justin Fields or Kamisera. Justin Fields think, is already. I think, five I think there's a player. very good chance if you want to wager on this. I think there's a very good chance that Justin that Zach Wilson will wind up with a better career than Justin Fields. We'll see. We'll see. One guy is uh, looking at it this They're way. They're both flawed right now. They're both flawed. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, uh, you know, just because somebody hasn't done it now doesn't mean they won't do it in the future. Right. And um, that's got to apply to just Marshall Lynch finish. was not good in Buffalo. He was great with Seattle. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and the league is littered with guys and examples like that. I'm just saying <clears throat> for a super low cost. I'd rather have Zach Wilson backing up than probably 85% of the rookie quarterbacks that are available. And that's what this brings, this brings me back. I to mean, I, I wouldn't mind Carson Wentz, but Larry. if it really came down to it, I mean, we're talking about backup quarterback. We're talking about the third string backup quarterback. Who do you want? You can, these are your choices. Carson Wentz is a trade for Zach Wilson or draft somebody. I would say Carson Wentz or trading for Zach Wilson would be in front of draft somebody because you don't know. I mean, the the whole, what do you want out of your back? What do I want out of the backup quarterback this year? I want somebody that if Brock Purdy gets hurt and is going to miss five games can step in and play the position well enough that you win three or four of those games. And that when Brock comes back, he's healthy, he's ready to go to the playoffs and you don't give up the season. So okay, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna come, back from, I'm come back to my original point. Anything other than a seven for Zach Wilson should be a walkaway price point for the 49ers. Z seventh rounder, that's it. I could see a I could see a pick swap. So like Zach Wilson in a seventh for the Niners sixth, something like that. I think I'd rather rock with with Brandon Allen. I really would. But look. Oh, I would I, not. I mean, I, I like Brandon Allen. Yeah, I will agree good. with you, Larry, that guys deserve second chances. But Zach Wilson is not better than Justin Fields, shouldn't fetch a better price than Justin Fields, shouldn't be anything other than a seventh-round pick if the 49ers are going to add him. And if you do add him, know that you're adding a player that was widely disliked in his former locker room, in his past locker room. So just I'm not I mean, even I would approach that with caution. That. I mean, I'm not convinced of that. I'm really not. I mean, um, also Zach Wilson has shown in in spurts. He hasn't shown anything. He had, Zach Wilson's shown nothing, Larry. There's nothing to be shown. Okay, so him. this year, Damon, there was a game played on December 10th, and it was against D'Amico Ryan's and the Houston Texans, who have a pretty good defense. Mm -hmm. And Zach Wilson started that game, went 27 of 36 for 301 yards and two touchdowns, no picks, ran three times for 12 yards, had a 117.9 rating. That, okay. game, that game existed. Now go so over any thing. other game. Now okay, go over any other game that he played but that one. Remove the, the highest score from okay. the, the Russian judge and remove the lowest score from okay. the France judge. And what do we got in the middle? We let's got a go. guy that the Jets let's are running go. away from. The Jets, if, the if there was something there, why aren't the Jets continuing to plummet, especially with Aaron Rodgers being old man coming off of vice presidential candidate rumors and an Achilles? Like, if there was something to continue to plumb in Zach Wilson, why aren't the Jets plumbing it? Why aren't they interested any longer? He beat the Denver Broncos 31-21. He went 19 of 26. He completed 73% of his passes. 
the week before they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs, the same Chiefs team that you saw in the Super Bowl had a really good defense. What did Zach Wilson do in that loss? He went 28 of 39, so he completed 72% of his passes, 245 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Uh, he was sacked twice. He ran twice. Um, I'm getting you, you know, a Zach Wilson jersey. I mean, but, but I'm just I'm saying. I'm getting you a saying, Zach Wilson jersey. You are saying, the you're saying he can't run, you're saying he can't run at all. You're wrong. He ran against the Raiders four times for 54 yards. He averaged 13 yards a carry against the Raiders. He ran against Denver three times for 26 yards. Are you trying I'm to saying, are, are you trying to say he's a better runner than Justin Fields? No, but I mean I'm just I'm looking at his game log. Now let's check Fields' game log for the year. And let's see what the best games that Fields played this year. And I'm sure there's a couple, right? There's always yeah, going to be. That's the thing. There's always something. You're, I mean, okay, yeah, so I feel let's like see. we're Let's see what it is. What the best that Fields did this year was he had one game against Minnesota where he completed 73%. He went 27 of 37 for 217 yards. They won the game. They scored 12 points. Okay. He did have, he did have an eight, that same, that he also had an 18 carry 104 yard rushing day against Detroit in a loss 31 26 that's pretty impressive any any hundred yard quarterback rushing day is good but um he also had a four that same against Denver he did throw for four touchdowns and he completed 80 percent of his passes and had a 132 rating that was his best game of the year I'm just saying they're young quarterbacks who have mostly negative but they've had glimpses of very positive and um, I'd be interested in either one of those guys. I would have been interested in Fields at that price. I'd be interested in Zach Wilson. I think Zach Wilson is probably better. Like they're choosing between Carson Wentz, Zach Wilson, a trade for Zach Wilson, or a draft choice of somebody. Well, maybe there's a guy in the draft that could be as good as those guys, but I would rather have Wentz or Fields or Zach Wilson. So I'm just, I just don't get so wowed by what they do today um, because it's not all about today. It's about projecting. I mean, there's guys who have bad college days who are damn good quarterbacks. Steve Young was awful. I'd rather, Tampa. I'd rather Kyle Shanahan go back to CJ Beathard than I think see Zach Wilson. But look, Zach Wilson, I'll give you this, Larry. Maybe like he can be fixed. Maybe he can be fixed. But right now, if you try to fix him for anything more than a seventh rounder, you got fleeced comparing, con considering Fields went for a sixth. I, I, by the way, and Ryan Poles totally misjudged that market. The Bears are so bad at every element of the life cycle of a quarterback. They don't know how to trade them. Draft them, sign them, cut them, release them, nothing. Like there's they don't know how to play quarterbacks. They're just bad at every single branch of the quarterback developmental how you do business with them chart. The Bears are awful at it. Yeah, um, but part of it, part out. of that could be impatience. You know, part of their problem could be impatience. I mean, they're they're I think that Ryan Poles made the dumbest move of all time. You just gave a really good football organization a really talented young quarterback who's too raw that you haven't been able to develop the odds that Justin Fields goes to Pittsburgh and in the next couple of years becomes something are pretty good. I would say I, so too. I think pretty I good. Would, I, look, as someone who grew up rooting for the Chicago bears, there was a part of me that says, keep fields draft Marvin Harrison jr. Or Joe alt or trade out or trade back. Like it, I, I, I would have much rather seen another year of fields continuing to get it right than just hitting that reset button with you know a, a head coach who probably ain't long for this world, a new offensive coordinator who just, you know, I don't know. It's just anyway, I feel like I mean, look at look at Sam field. Darnold. Oh, Sam no. Darnold came to the Niners and he, he sucked, didn't, Larry. He, didn't, he, sucked. He, didn't, he just got doubled his salary. He somebody just paid him 10 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's a lack of quarterbacks. Everybody knows it. And, you know, guys get better. Guys get worse. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I like I like the idea of Zach Wilson because he needs a fresh start. He has talent. I think he's ready to 
play better. I think his best football is coming. Is he ready to grow up? I mean, that's the thing. If I he's think ready so. to take I mean, that mature step forward and get out of New York and refocus on everything. Who knows? But I watched yeah. the hard knocks. He he he. I saw him in her, you know, exchange with his teammates. He's not a bad guy. He just he just made a mistake. He made a mistake, and he's had a hard time transitioning to the NFL. But he still has wheels, an arm, playmaking ability. He's young. He's cheap. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you you know, here's the thing. I still believe in Trey Lance. You don't. I still believe in Justin Fields. You may or may not. I still believe in Zach Wilson. These guys haven't done it yet, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to do it. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I understand. I, I did not expect to get on here and tell you that Zach Wilson, I think, is a good would be a good fit for the Niners and have the chat throw me, uh, you know, rose petals. I knew, I know that the common wisdom among the football viewing public is that Zach Wilson sucks and that Trey Lance sucks. And that <laughs> Larry, I love you. Forget about, the chat. forget about the chat for a second. I'm telling you, you're a little overextended here on, on Zach Wilson. Well, that's fine. But I, I mean, love your body. I, I love your I, body. You, need, I, you need to let this go. You need to no, let this go. Don't say another no, don't. word about fucking Zach Wilson. I can't take anymore. No, I, I don't need to let it go because there's still lots of people in here that are going to need to remember that I am in still in favor of Zach Wilson so that when Zach Wilson plays good, you guys can all say, oh, I guess I didn't know what I was talking about. I guess Krug did know what he was talking about. So just remember that and we'll get, we'll see where it goes. Okay. Are we done with that guy, please? <laughs> Let's talk about the goodbyes. We did the the new faces, same places, and your goodbyes. There's not a single goodbye here, Larry, that I think definitively renders the 49ers a lesser football team. They've said goodbye to Sam Darnold, Charlie Warner, Ray Ray McLeod, Javon Kinlaw, Cleland Farrell, Oren Burks, Matt Pryor. Not a single one of those guys is a, oh, no, Eric Armstead. We'll include him, obviously, too, Eric Armstead. Um, Armstead hurts the most, but, again, is not a fatal flaw uh, built into this offseason. Um, I think maybe of any player on this list other than Eric Armstead, Charlie Warner might have had the best season last year, and he just blocks, basically. Um, Cleveland Farrell was a maybe came on at one point where we got excited about him. Then that excited, that excitement kind of uh, wilted in the sunlight. Um, not a single goodbye here that I think affects the Niners negatively. I think, I think they're fine with who's, who's gone. Well, Armstead, I mean, Armstead is, is the key guy. I mean, the rest of them, nobody, you know, the rest of those guys are not factors. Um, prior never played. Burks got lit up like a Christmas tree in the Super Bowl. Kinlaw is a good guy, but he needed to move and didn't fit the scheme. Uh, Cleveland Farrell's coming off a knee injury. He doesn't have a lot of speed. Charlie Warner can't catch a cold. Sam Darnold, in my mind, is not very good. Ray Ray McLeod is a pretty decent return guy, but they th th that had ship that you know that ship had sailed and that had gone its full course. He needed to probably move. But Armstead, I mean, Armstead's the guy. I mean, w w if you're Eric Armstead, you know, you, sh you should have just figured out a way to do what Juice did and figure out a number that was going to be acceptable. I mean, you're a fixture in the community here. You know, I mean, it's like you're a lifelong 49er. Uh, you should have figured out a way to stay a 49er. Instead, right. he couldn't. You're close, your home couldn't. Town. You're close to yeah. your charity work. Yeah, now he's in Jacksonville. He'll never win a Super Bowl. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, he made a disastrous decision. He didn't join the, you know, the worst team in the league, but I don't think he's going to win there. So, um, but they'll miss Armstead, man. They'll miss Armstead. I mean, he was their best run defender. He was their smartest defensive lineman. He was the guy that, you know, did command some double teams from time to time. Um, They'll miss him for sure. I, I do like Jordan Elliott and Malik Collins because they're younger and healthier, fresher, more football left ahead. But Armstead, it would have been nice to see Armstead figure out a way to 
to stay or for the I Niners. Think it been in the best interest of his legacy, not just like playing days and opportunity to win, just the overall best interest, leaving a little money on the table to be a career Niner is going to make you more money in retirement at card shows and signed autographs and crap like that. That'll go over huge with Niners fans. No one's going to give a shit that you showed up to the Jacksonville Jaguars fan fest 10 years from now. And you know, it's just, I, I think you can do more from a profile standpoint with the 49ers than you can with the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's the same kind of like Clay Thompson recipe. Clay Thompson will be better served by taking a humble slice of pie to stay with the Golden State Warriors than probably too big a slice than he deserves to go and not be the savior of what other next team he could possibly show up on. I think there's more value for Clay remaining a warrior. But now we're on to a different topic. Let me just Well no, the 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 problem is, is that it's hard for guys to accept a reduced role on their own team. And that's why organizations get rid of guys because it's like, oh, you know what? He's going to have a hard time accepting <clears throat> a lesser role on this team. It's probably the reason Clay's got to move. And it's probably the reason that it's more comfortable for Armstead to move because but, you know, he can go to Jacksonville and he can just be kind of in the rotation where if he's just in the rotation in the Niner locker room, maybe in his mind, he loses face. I mean, historically, oh. this, what I would say to Clay and Eric Armstead was you're at the natural aging processes of your careers with the injuries that are built into both of your career stories to where you shouldn't be less open to a reduced role because you're in the reducing your role portion of your career. Clay is at that moment in time in his career where a lot of guys who were starters go to the bench, become sixth men. Um, you know, sixth men are usually like the not ready to be a starter yet ascending young player or used to be a great starter yet kind of descending veteran. So now you go to that six man role. And I just don't think there's any shame at all for Clay to take that with the, the Warriors if he wants to stay. And the same thing with Armstead too. Like, dude, you, you were, you were good. Really good is a little beauty in the eye of the beholder. Um, you know, it, really uh, respected. I mean, yes. Armstead was like the most respected player in the entire room. By the way, um, can you get rid of broken metronome on here? I don't want to see Zach Wilson's name anymore on this show. <laughs> Thank you, broken metronome. No, go. no more. We've we, enough, enough. I don't want to talk about Brian Wilson. I don't want to talk about the volleyball from Castaway. I don't want to talk about Rebel Wilson. No more Wilson. JJ Raider, I will not forget, Larry. Thank you. No one will then forget, Steven Larry. Steven Draper, don't die on the Zach Wilson Hill. <laughs> 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 we got this one. G Man music. Larry's tur uh, turning Rain Man. He won't stop. Larry's a very uh, good driver, especially on Wednesdays. Wednesdays Jer is a good day for Larry to drive. Jared says Larry has Zach Wilson Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> there we go. There we um, go. So just kind of in summation of how the roster has shuffled in the first week of free agency, Larry, there really isn't a loss that I think hurts this team. That is a detrimental loss to this team. And there isn't an addition that I don't think makes sense. There are a couple additions that you got to talk yourself into a little bit, but it all kind of makes sense. So I think that just from a logical standpoint, all you got to do is look around the NFL to find illogical, doesn't make sense deals. The Niners haven't done any of that so far. So I think it's been a pretty damn good week one. The criticisms of what we've seen so far. Um, let's go through this. I think these are all fair criticisms, if not observations. The big splash hasn't happened. Yeah, the big splash doesn't need to happen for this to have been a good offseason so far, but it hasn't happened in, like you just said, keyword yet. It could still come. So everyone needs to remember we're at the beginning of roster reshuffling, not at the end yet. So everyone needs to calm down. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it won't. Um, no major upgrade to speak of along the offensive line. They've retained who they want to retain, Larry, but they haven't improved anywhere yet what do you think of the incomplete in free agency on the offensive line do you think it's fair to give the Niners an incomplete or did they overlook something that they should have prioritized a little bit more well I mean I think they're it depends what their mindset is I mean 
I thought there were some decent guards out there that were available. Nick Allegretti went to the Commanders. Uh, Damian Lewis went to the Panthers. Um, and and the Niners, re- you know, retained Feliciano, retained McKivitz. I mean, they went to the Super Bowl with the line that they have right now. Um, and I think most people believe that, you know, I kind of think the Niners, the way they're looking at their offensive line, is that there wasn't a there's no tackles that really could help in free agency and that that if they were going to go tackle they were going to have to do it in the draft and then i think there were a few guards that they had interest in but they instead re-signed feliciano so um i thought I Kevin Zeitler was a guy that they that, that's still out there by the way he's out there i mean he and he's 34 so it's a little on the old side but he's a tough guy for sure um, and that would help them at right guard to have a guy like Zeitler. Lake but, I mean, Tomlinson, Cody Whitehair. Right. Um, and maybe they'll grab one of these guys at guard for, you know, when the when the market starts to depress and these guys are out there for cheaper. But right now they haven't gone in that direction. But look what they have. They have 10 draft choices. And what are their real needs? If we just said quickly across the board, offensively, they need one more quarterback. Running back wise, they really don't need anybody. I mean, they could use, I guess, one back maybe. But I mean, like, you can pick that guy up off the street. That is a right. camp running back. You need a camp running back, not a running back. I that's mean, play. May, well, depending on on what you think of Mason and Mitchell and the health of McCaffrey, and it's always, I mean, it's it's always. Hey, if you can find a great running back. A great running back can always help you. But I'm just saying. They don't need a core. They they need a third, uh, a second or third quarterback. They don't really need a running back. Um, at tight end, you're going to have Kittle and Cam too. So they you and Braden Willis. You probably could use a tight end. Um, you definitely need a right tackle, and you probably need at least one more offensive lineman beyond that. What and, about maybe? What about calling up David Bakhtiari and saying, "Look, man, we're going to ask yeah. you to play right tackle." He's it's about health, I think, with him. Yeah. And then receiver wise, I mean, you've got Ayuk, Debo, Jawan, and then you, you re sign Chris Conley. They like Ronnie Bell. You have Danny Gray and Tay Martin. So you got seven receivers right there. You could definitely use another receiver. But I'm just saying on offense, you don't have a primary need for anything other than maybe an offensive tackle. So you, and and that's your primary need. The rest of them are all secondary needs. Then you flip the card over to the defense. Your fir- first team defensive line is Hargrave, Collins, Bosa, and Floyd. Your second team D line is Jordan Elliott and Givens inside. You tier Gross Matos and either Drake Jackson or Robert Beal outside. Um, so you're kind of about eight deep there, even though I just named nine guys. That doesn't include Kalia Davis or T. Y. McGill or Austin Bryant or any of their other guys they have. They, they've they got four or five other guys. So, I mean, they could use another D lineman, but it's not like, oh, my God, they got to have another D lineman. And then at linebacker, you got Warner. You had just signed Devondre Campbell. You got Greenlaw redshirting for a year, but you still have Flanagan Fowles, very good special team linebacker. And you got two young guys that I think are really good in Jalen Graham and D. Winter. So, the need at linebacker is not spectacular. Well, we're going to see in this draft exactly what they think of Graham and Winters, right? The yeah. evaluation on both of them will reveal itself based on what they do in this draft because okay, well, you're talking about the defense. I could see defensive line, corner, safety help, and we'll talk about safeties here in a second. I mean, safeties, you got you got Mooney and Hafanga, and you've got, uh, I mean, you've got um, Hafanga and Brown, and you got George Odom, who's your special teamer, and you got a couple other guys who are just bodies, and Eric Harris, Taylor Hawkins. Not bad, but special teamers, you know, back of the roster guys. So you could use another safety. Well, and and you got to assume the year starts without either Hufanga or Greenlaw. Like, both of them are not, you probably can- not playing week one, week two, week three, right? Yeah, I mean, they're going to, well, especially Greenlaw. And then corner-wise, you got Mooney, you got Ambry, you got Demo. Those are three. You just signed Yadam. That's four. You got Luter, who's a fifth-round pick, who they supposedly like a lot. That's five. You got Womack. That's six. They just signed the special teamer, Chase Lucas. That's seven. You only typically go with five. So, I mean, like, yeah, you could use a true number one corner if you could find one. Uh, and push everybody down a slot, and and you know, because I don't know how much they believe in Looter and Womack, 
But my point is just this. They have 10 picks and they probably have four or five real needs. So if you look at it, this might be the year to trade your first and your third and next year's two to Denver for Sertan. Because if you get a true number one corner, now you've made your defense quite a bit better. Now you could probably make the argument the defense next year could be better than the defense last well, year. Well, how good? I mean, if Mooney Ward is pretty damn good covering up, blanketing your number one receiver, how about Mooney on your second receiver? Now all of a sudden shit gets interesting, right? I mean, I. How about yeah. Ambry on the bench? That's I mean, if you, if you had Lenore, Mooney, and Sertan in your back, it is your back three corners. And then you had everybody else just backing up. I think that's a very, very good spot to be. So I'm just saying, I don't know if Sertan's going to get moved. I don't know if they have the um, draft capital to make it happen. But like when I go through the mock drafts and I think, well, wait a second, you might be able to get Sertan for this year's first, this year's third and next year's second. You know what? That might be worth doing. This And it's like, when do you trade for the awesome veteran? You do it the way the Rams did it. You know, they added Jalen Ramsey. Why? Because they were in their Super Bowl window. And what did they do? They won the Super Bowl. I mean, then being in your Super Bowl window is awesome. But if you win the Super Bowl inside your Super Bowl window, that's better. Sertan could be that guy. So I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I, I've heard people say, hey, go Graham Barton in the first round. Okay. Um, I'd rather have Sertan. And, and a third-round offensive lineman or a fourth-round offensive lineman than Graham Barton and and right. you know, I'd rather starting I mean, Ambry Thomas. There are two guys who are on this roster who, with great off-seasons and step-forwards developmentally, can just make everything fit together so much better and so much easier. I think offensively, it's Spencer Burford. I think a huge step into year three for a 23 year old 30 starts under his belt already Spencer Burford to the point where Feliciano is not, you know, even being thought of as someone who's got to start at right guard is just total backup insurance policy. That would be a huge step forward. And Ambry Thomas is that guy defensively as well. I, for every two Really bad Ambry Thomas plays. There's one where he makes a hell of a play, man. I, I think there's a player in Ambry Thomas. I really do. They just, it these things take time. Yeah. I mean, Ambry Thomas was a 2021 draft choice. Burford was 2022. So, I mean, it's time for these guys to come of age. You know, the only thing I'd say about Burford is there's no guarantee he's going to get there. I mean, he was a fourth round pick. Um, he maybe gets there. He maybe doesn't. I like him. I think he's in a lot of ways, you know, he's smart. I think he's the prototype physically. Um, I'm okay going forward. I'm, I'm not crazy about Brendel after watching DJ reader kind of take him apart. Um, so like if they could get like, I'll tell you one move, you know, that would make sense to me is if they get to the bottom of round one and they take a center, you know, Zach Frazier from West Virginia is awesome. Um, the guy from Oregon, Powers Johnson. He's a top damn good. pick, probably. He's he's yeah, he's, he's probably, probably, he's probably not gonna get lineman off the board. Yeah, he's probably not gonna get there. But Zach Frazier, I think, is a dominating future Pro Bowl center. Love Zach Frazier. He just buries people. Like, so I'd be happy with Zach Frazier in the first round and you know, going for that tackle. I mean, to me, some of my favorite tackles are Javon Foster, Garrett Greenfield. I mean, these guys are going in the third round. So um, so it, to me, it's not as the urgency is not there to take that tackle in the first round if there's something else there. But, I mean, Mason McCormick is an awesome guard. They could use him. Um, you know, the, Zach Frazier is an awesome center. They could use him. In some ways, I look at this draft as this is the draft to load up on two or three offensive linemen that you love. And build your offensive, build your fortress around Brock Purdy. And if you can find one more awesome receiver to help him as well, that would be great. But that's to me, to me, this draft should be about Purdy, protecting Purdy, giving Purdy another weapon, and then maybe filling in on all three levels of your defense with, you know, one D tackle, one D end, one linebacker, one safety, one corner. You know, I mean, I, you know, if you got guys that you like, 
to fill in on your defense, but you've already done a lot on defense. Uh, to me, it's like this is if you could find three really good young offensive linemen that you thought were going to be studs, this would be the draft to do it. I mean, it's a deep draft and there's guys available and you have the need. So I think that's that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, um, you know, the free the, the draft is going to be about some hand pick guys on D, but mostly the offensive line. Welcome, welcome to Wake Up with Damon and Larry. Please hit like and subscribe. We see we've got a few supers, Larry. Let's get to those right here and now. It's a great way to reach out and support the channels that Larry and I are working on here. But like, subscribe, notify, that does an awful lot to help us as well. So do those things. And Larry, what do we got? Well, we've got a couple supers, but some of these I just highlighted. Um, Texas Niner says, I was listening to Brad Graham's channel. Uh, I guess 957 interviewed some media person who covers the Jaguars. Yeah, that was a lady who had the uh, IUK story. And she says a second and a third for BA is not enough. The only way the Niners part with BA should be a, a mid first round pick. Is it, uh, was, it Kendra first round pick? was it Kendra Middleton who was on there? Because Kendra used to work in 957 the game. I had her on during Jacksonville week. No, no, it was it was a lady from Jacksonville who okay. who covers the Jags who had the report last week um, that the Jaguars and and uh, Ayuk's camp have a mutual interest, and she's just saying, hey, the Niners like Ayuk and they they don't want to move him unless they get a first round pick, and I understand that. Well, after losing um, Calvin Wrigley, the Jaguars got to do something, right? So yeah, right. Of there's gonna be some interest there. Dale says best off-season move that we can make is ban the 10. Is that Jimmy? Is that a shot of Jimmy? Look, Jimmy shot? at the right price. Jimmy's a Ram. Jimmy's a Ram. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Jimmy's Jimmy Jimmy went to the Rams. They couldn't go back to Jimmy. They, come on, they were not going back to Jimmy. Uh, Mike Vaz says, Larry, what are your thoughts on Tredavious White? Supposedly the Niners may have some interest in him. I mean, my thoughts are he was the, one of the best corners in all of football and then suffered some very serious injuries. So I'd have to see him work out and see how he's moving post-injury. But, I mean, yeah, this guy was awesome. This is one of the best corners in all of pro football pre-injury. What is he post-injury? Um, and who was it? There was some Niner yesterday that was like, come play here. I forget who it was. But somebody was like in the Tredavious White, Instagram saying, you know, he can play here. He's a, he was an awesome player. I'll say that back in the day. Uh, Bab925, Larry wanted to give up a first, a second, and a third pick for Sertan, now dying on the Zach Wilson Hill. What's in his drink cup? First of all, I, I think that that is probably the price tag for Sertan. I mean, you're talking about a number one corner in the prime of his career. Um, the Chiefs just traded um, the Jerry Sneed to the Colts, right? Or on or on the verge of doing it, and they're getting a second round pick. Sertan, in my mind, is better than Sneed. So I, I, you know, to say that Sertan would command a one, a two, and a three, uh, I think that's probably true. If you could get him to do it over two years, I think would be the key there. Yeah, how about a one and a three and a future two or something like that? I yeah. I would like to see the Niners work that out if they were able to. But is yeah, Steve the Colts done? Is that about to happen? Yeah, I mean, that that was being rumored the other day. Um, and then we got this one from Brian Salcedo. The Finns have a redundancy at wide receiver. Uh, trade Debo and a pick for Waddle. Use CMC in the Debo role with Mason or Mitchell on the field. Kyle wants a project draft. Joe Milton, don't trade for Wilson. Trade Huff uh, in 31 for a better pick for a left tackle. So now you're trading a Fonga. You don't want Wilson. You do want Joe Milton, who I am very intrigued by. He's, you know, huge and got a huge arm. But, um, you know, there's a lot of development there. As far as the Dolphins thing, you're going to trade Debo for Waddle? I don't know. I don't think I don't think uh, McDaniel's going to go for that. Um Waddle will be nice. He's hurt a lot, but he's got huge huge wheels. Um and then Matt from the base is Farhan fired Rennell. 
Is that hold on now? Hold on now. We were going to get to this, and here it is. So, Rennell looking to come back for a 25th year as the public address announcer of the San Francisco Giants reached an impasse. And I don't know if it was, I, again, we don't know what the contract negotiation was, but Rennell should have been brought back if it's just about money. I mean, there's no amount of money she couldn't ask for that is officially like a cup of coffee for the San Francisco Giants. Um, she's not asking for like three million in an arbitration case. You know what I mean, Larry? Like, like is it gonna be one of those things? Are they gonna give Rennell's money to Blake Snell? <laughs> is that the deal? Get rid of Rennell right. and then now wind that, up with Snell. Now that the extraordinary extravagant expenditure that is Rennell out of the the broadcast booth uh they're gonna be able to afford a, a starting pitcher no i it's um that's an odd move it's a really odd I mean, move again she's i a great I, lady she, I, you know i consider her a personal friend me too i have it's her wonderful. i have her bobble bobblehead somewhere sure Rennell where, is Rennell the kind somewhere. of person that you stay in business with as long as she wants to stay in business with you. I mean, it's just that simple. And for the Giants to be walking away as she's coming into a 25th year with the team, they're going to be announcing, according to Susan Slesser, her replacement uh, a little bit later on today. But those are big shoes to fill. I mean, and is it is it is it her decision or their decision? Can we you, do not we we do not know that as of today. It sounds you know all the public going their own way statement from the team, and so far, Rennell, it's looked very very you know uh, uh, mutual, and everyone is taking the high road in their thank yous and goodbyes, and it was wonderful and blah blah blah. And she is the the Giants are calling her. Public address announcer emeritus. Like, what the fuck does that mean? So whenever whenever she wants to do it, she can. I mean, what what is that? Public address announcer emeritus? There has never been a bigger scoop of bullshit served in a press release than that. I think you might be post-game host emeritus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it whatever, possible? Maybe if, the two of us. Could be post game show host emeritus. Look at it this way: if whatever weekend board op they lowballed to take the job don't show up that week, Larry and I could be on tap. <laughs> it's a very young weekend crew. What happened to Marty? Where's Marty's Marty? Still in the mix. Marty was really? on this weekend. Marty was on yesterday. He's fine. Marty's not going anywhere. Marty, the pregame guy, and then. Uh, Lasky was the post game guy. Now I only I never hear Marty. Or the, Marty's or still I, Marty's still around. Marty's still around. All right, just making sure. Look at it this way: they don't pay Marty, so he'll be around for as long as he wants. No, I get it, but I mean, I, Marty used to do all of the pregame. Now I never hear Marty. I hear him like one segment. There's some other young guy in there, but whatever. I love the. I love the enthusiasm for Giants baseball from the young, the, the young weekend announcers. Right. Things look good. I mean, Landon Roop. I mean, you know, there they, things are looking good. Look, all I can tell you is that the nine, or excuse me, the the San Francisco Giants have completely lost touch with the touch points that fans really care about. You know, there's something to be said about nostalgia and familiarity when you walk into the ballpark. And the Giants know this because they sell more nostalgia and familiarity than any other team in baseball. And to not bring Rennell back over whatever the price point was, if they really were dickering over a price point, the fact that they just wouldn't meet it. You know, here's an extra 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand. Even if Rennell asked for a money? six. Even if it was a six-figure raise, they should have paid it to her because that is nothing to a Major League Baseball team. It's nothing. Now, what are the Giants going to do? What are they? How are they going to go about replacing Rennell? Oh, if it's about money, then shame on them. I mean, come on. You bought the team. Do we? I mean, it's like sometimes I feel like we need a refresher course on this stuff. They bought the team in 1992. For a hundred million dollars. Here we are. It's 2024. The debt service on the stadiums paid off. They own the building outright. 
They own much of the land around the stadium and the team. Teams worth like $4 billion. And the team, according to Forbes magazine, is worth like $4 billion. So you can't tell me that you need to save a buck on Rennell. You can't even tell me that you need to save a buck on Ian Sn- on Blake Snell. Go sign these guys, you donkeys. <laughs> Look at it this it, way. It's amazing. These funniest, guys, if these guys are that cheap, then they deserve what they get. Larry, funniest chat of the day. Funniest, been, in my opinion, says they need PA announcer optionality. <laughs> <laughs> what if they have so Rennell will be introducing the infielders and right-handed hitters in the batting order where they're going to bring in a platooned PA announcer for the outfielders and the left-hand hitters. Dusty Gold says Larry can do the announcer and Ralph's voice for the Giants. Now batting <laughs> in center field, Jung Hu Lee. We're rooting for him. Come to Meachies. Meet me at a Meachies. I'm batting in the two hole. He was the Willie Mack Award winner last year. He's a hell of a guy. I told Tay, I told Tom, he's one of my favorites. Tyro Estrada. Tyro, come on out. Take a, take a, take a, take a bow. <laughs> at shortstop, it's not Brandon Crawford. I miss Brandon Crawford. He has all those kids, but it's Nick Ahmed, and he's kind of like a right handed version of Brandon Crawford. <laughs> it would just be awesome. By the way, Nick Ahmed uh, got a pretty good batting average when I looked at. So I looked at the Giant Spring Training box score the other day. There are a couple yeah. batting averages in there that make you go, "Huh," and then you realize it's just spring training and don't get excited about anything. Uh, well, yeah, you never know. I mean, you never know. They've got some guys who are swinging it. There's a path, like anything else. There's a path to ninety wins. There's a path to seventy wins. And it's just a matter of where are they going to get? I mean, if enough of their ifs get answered, correct, you know, in a positive manner, if if Amir Garrett's really good, if if Landon Roop and and Mason Black, you know, combine to win eighteen games, if um, you know they get they get Robbie Ray back in the middle of the season, and he's like a Cy Young Award winner now that he's healthy again. If Bailey comes on, if Chapman dials yes, the guy's it back. the limit if 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 Robbie if Ray's a Cy happen. Young Award winner out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, anything could happen. If what if Jung Hu Lee is like, you know, he's like this this modern abs- hero. Yeah, what if he's a 310 hitter with 15 jacks and 22 steals and he's gold glove and center? You know, if all these things happen, if they all these ifs are all positive. There's a path to 90 wins. It's just if not going to happen. Everyone stays healthy and has a career year all at the same time. I really like this team's chances, Larry. Outside right. of that, could be a little bit of an adventure along the way. Right. Uh, we will all be watching, I guess, uh, but we will not be hearing Rennell any longer, which, which again, is unfortunate, man. Because, I mean, she's got great pipes, um, she does a terrific job. You know, the they had a woman before her who was no not very good. Then they gave her the job, and she did it incredibly for a long period of time. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, is it is you know? D- didn't she question a couple of their decisions in the last year? I thought. I don't know if I they're literally. She, I thought she the heat on her. What, are they they're pulling a uh, a Drew Remender on you. her. How dare you question us? Right. That's I, I that, could have swore that she questioned something that they did in the last year. I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, if look at it this way. If that is the reason why she's not coming back, that would be the only thing that would be worse than not meeting whatever her, I'm sure, reasonable salary request was because Rennell is not an unreasonable woman at all. Not even close. So... Um, it's a shame and it'll be the, 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 one of the things that make that ballpark, that ballpark will not be making it that ballpark. Let me ask you who is going to be the replacement. Like there's, there's simply no way the giants can turn around and like offer up some big deep throated male announcer now. Right. I mean, do they have to go woman again? Do they, I mean, what, what? No, I don't oh, think they have what, to go what, woman what again, but they, they probably to will to quell the outrage of whoever the replacement is. I mean, 
I don't think there's going to be any outrage, but um, but I would say they they could go. You know, they they've had two back to back female PA announcers. They could go to a man PA announcer again. Um, you know, they could. They probably won't, but they could. They'll probably go to some. My guess would be like some young lady will get it. They should some, go with Bruce McGowan. <laughs> yeah, and he, like by the sixth inning, he's doing his bad Richard Nixon impression. And how about it? <laughs> anyway, um, love you, Brucey, if you're watching. We hope you are. Uh, like and subscribe, good people. We're going to wrap up with this. And then, Larry, I do. I got to get rolling here. Um, big, Warrior, day. You, you big day today? Big day today. Uh, 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 Warriors and Knicks at Chase Center. This Monday night, the Warriors have dumped four of their last six games, but they got Curry back on Saturday. And they won over the Lakers down in L.A. in a game that did matter because they're jockeying for ninth and 10th right now. You got a three game homestand Knicks Grizzlies Pacers this week and only 16 games left in this regular season. So the price of poker has gone totally up in every single game they play. If you like if you like basketball with consequences, that is the corner that the Warriors have painted themselves into. Every single one of these games comes with an element of consequence attached to it. So. Here we go. And Larry, we got piping hot, fresh brackets, brackets, brackets. Hey, coming off the, the printer. Um, Tom Crean laying into teams that have turned down uh, NIT bids was is already some really good TV. You should check that out. He's right about everything that he said. Um, and there you go. Who, there is who's, your who's doing that. Who's turning down NIT? Well, Indiana turned down an NIT bid. Um, other teams have already said, you know, now that they're, they're not going, they're not going to go. Uh, they're not going to go to the NIT. It was a couple of higher profile teams that have just said, thanks, but no thanks. And that, that's kind of lame. It is. Well, now the NIT once upon a time was the bigger tournament. Right. But now, I mean, now it's clearly the booby prize of postseason play. And there are but, like what well, you don't me, you you don't you want to play more games? Don't you want to spread the Indiana banner as much as you possibly can? Or is it well this so distasteful that you didn't make? What, what Tom Crean brought up is a great point. Was simply what time do you have to get this all back together? Like you're about to hit a transfer portal. Your team's about to change. If any player wants to opt out, freaking let them. You know, I'm telling you, Larry, we're going to reach the point where NCAA tournament games become like bowl games, and you're going to have really, really high-profile players just say, nah, I'm not playing. Um, that's what happens when you bring in the level of NIL money and professionalism collegiately to a guy who's about to turn real pro. You watch. You're going to have, like, like seriously, Caitlin Clark shouldn't play a fucking game for Iowa. She shouldn't. She should be done right now. She shouldn't. What? She's going to be the number one overall Why? pick in the draft. Of what? The WNBA? Sure. They, Caitlin they Clark don't, they don't draw more than like a WNBA draw at franchise all. to the future of women's basketball. I mean, what, the, what did the WNBA draw anything at all? I mean, the WNBA doesn't even make money. The WNBA is floated by the NBA. Totally. Yeah. I mean, the WNBA, if the WNBA existed in and of itself with no NBA backing, they'd be out of business. So what are we even talking about? She's she's running to the WNBA. I mean, maybe she's running to some sponsor deal, but she's not the WNBA. Right. On, well, the rumor was me. she could make more money coming back to Iowa than she probably could in the WNBA. But um, that's it, Larry. I uh, I do have a, a busy morning and I do have to use the restroom. So there you go. I'm done. Larry, uh, it was a great show. I love the the Ralph that you already put into the show today. Can I get one more? Uh, would you please be uh, 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 announcing uh, how how would Ralph introduce Logan Webb? <laughs> Here's a guy who's from NorCal, and he, he's a big Kings fan, Warrior fans. Don't forget, he's a big Kings guy. Uh, Logan Webb, he's from Rockland. The Niners used to train in Rockland. They still, they, you know, they still could, but they now they train in Santa Clara. I remember they used to train in Stockton, but I always liked it more in Rockland. I'm all partial to uh, to, to, to Logan Webb. He's got to, he's gonna have to be their number one, their number three, and their number five starter. But you know what? He's gonna be a hell of a guy, Logan Webb. He's a terrific, terrific young man. What do you think, Tommy? <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back Wednesday morning, 8.30. We'll talk to you again then.
You got to love Zach Wilson. You got to love. He's going to be a Niner before the end of the day. Crew gets so. He's so cute with the way he gets so uh, all fired up about these players that can't play dead. Come on, Krug. Zach Wilson stinks. You know it. You, you just don't want to admit it. Come on. Right, I gotta Krug. go, Larry. Let's go. Come on. Let's not end this thing. Let's make Damon wet his pants. Come on. <laughs>